we have retired General John Sheehan, and he's talking about homosexuals in the military. He talks about how gay Dutch soldiers were the reason for the uh, Serbian massacre. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's hear him. So, you know, there's going to be hilarity here. So <laughs> let's go to the video. It's uh, video number two. That led to a force that was ill-equipped to go to war. The case in point that I'm referring to is when the Dutch were required to defend Srebrenica against the Serbs. The battalion was under strength, poorly led, and the Serbs came into town, handcuffed the soldiers to the telephone poles, marched the Muslims off, and executed them. That was the largest massacre in Europe since World War II. And did the Dutch leaders tell you it was because there were gay soldiers there? It was a combination. But did they tell you that? That's my yes. question. They, they did. They included that as part of the problem. That there were gay soldiers that among the, the Dutch. The combination folks. was the liberalization of the military, a net effect of basically social engineering. The, you said that no special accommodation should be made for any member of the military. Sure. Um, are members who are straight, who are heterosexual, allowed in our military to say that they are straight and heterosexual? Are they allowed to say that without being discharged? Are they allowed to declare yeah. the sexuality? Yeah, are they allowed to say that, hey, I'm straight, I'm heterosexual. Can you say that I've, without being discharged? There's no prohibition to my knowledge. Is that special accommodation to them? I, I wouldn't consider a special accommodation. Why would it be a special accommodation then to someone who's gay to say, hey, I'm gay? Why, why do you call that special? You don't call it special for someone who's heterosexual or straight. Why do you believe that's a special accommodation to somebody who is gay? I think the <clears throat> issue, Senator, that we're talking about really hasn't a lot to do with the individuals. Uh, it has to do with the very nature of combat. Combat is not about individuals, it's about units. We're talking about a group of people who declare openly sexual attraction to a particular segment of the population and insist on continuing to live in the intimate proximity with them. But that you, by law. You allow that for, hetero, for heterosexuals. You yes. don't have any problem with that. Don't have a problem with that. You don't have any but problem that, with men and women serving together even though they say that they're attracted to each other. That's correct. That's not a special accommodation. No. no. I love that. And Senator Carl Levine is talking to him there. Levin, sorry, is Levin. talking to him there. Uh, and I love that because he turns this into a question of equality. And he's basically saying, so you don't believe in equality? I mean, when you really strip it down, that's what he's asking him. And he's like, no, I don't believe in equality. Well, I mean, uh, point number one, General Sheehan is dumb as dirt because it was so obvious what Levin was setting him up for, and he walked right into it over and over and over again. So General Sheehan, if you're listening right now, just keep your mouth shut from now on. You're not very good at this public spokesman uh, ship thing, this whole public speech thing, and I wasn't very good there either. Secondly, I just thought I'd do a little Google searching while we were listening to him. Dutch government officials, it says in the paper today, reacted angrily on Friday to claims of a retired U.S. general, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They are saying that he didn't tell the truth, that uh, no one ever told him that. The Dutch Defense Ministry issued a statement calling Sheehan's claims absolute nonsense, quote unquote, adding that gay Dutch soldiers routinely cooperate with the U.S. military in the NATO mission in Afghanistan, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the head of the military union there said Sheehan's comments were ridiculous and out of the realm of fiction. So if he was sworn in in order to give that congressional testimony, might be a good case for perjury there. Yeah, absolutely. He and lied. you know what happens when you go to prison? Don't make me elaborate on that. <laughs> Um, but what a bigot. Yeah, what a bigot. I, I mean, to say that uh, a massacre happened because the Dutch army allowed homosexuals and it was a liberal army, that's such a terrible thing to say. That's saying homosexuals are weak, they're not able to serve in the army, and we have homosexuals serving in our military right now, and that's degrading them when they're serving our country. And Absolutely. that's despicable, that's disgusting, and... 
I, I'm glad that he's retired. That's and all many, I have to say. <laughs> many of them have, have won all sorts of medals for bravery in combat and then been forced out when, it, uh, when we learn, even without don't ask, don't tell, they don't tell. They weren't asked, like the case of this gay woman, this lesbian woman, where she didn't tell, she mm -hmm. wasn't asked, but they, they found emails, private emails, and drummed her out because of that. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. It's amazing. And, you know, during the Bush administration, uh, whenever anyone said that they were opposed to the war in Iraq, the first thing that they would say is, you're anti-American, you are not supporting our troops, you're not supporting our troops, how can you do that? That's not patriotic. Well, what these Republicans are doing is they're not supporting our troops. Of course, that's a great point. They're not supporting, I don't know what the figures are, but f at least 5% of our troops are not being supported by these people. And we need every soldier we can get right now. Our military is stretched pretty thin. So. Absolutely. Watch more clips at theyoungturks.com.